I'm Mike Greiner. I'm a lifelong democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. If you share my concerns, then maybe you could like this video, subscribe to this channel, and maybe even hit that little bell that will notify you when I post a new video, because I do try to post pretty frequently. And the reason I need to post so frequently is because the news never stops. And today I want to talk to you about reports that Donald Trump and some of his supporters are all excited about the fact that there are now investigations into the possibility that the source of the coronavirus was a lab leak in Wuhan. And Donald Trump says this is something that he pointed to and he said was accurate a long time ago and everybody doubted him. And in fact, there was a group of scientists that circulated a letter claiming that there was no basis for that claim. And now there are questions being raised about that letter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hooray for Donald Trump. Well, I've got a couple of thoughts about this situation. Number one is this falls under the stopped watch being right twice a day category. For example, early on in the virus, Donald Trump was constantly constantly praising China. So it's kind of funny that all of a sudden he's claiming that his attacks on China are somehow exonerated when he really had both sides. So if it turns out that China was doing a good job, he was right. If China was not doing a good job, he was right. Let's take a look at this clip here. President Xi is working very hard. As you know, I spoke with him recently. He's working really hard. Uh, it's a tough problem. I think he's going to do. I, look, I've seen them build hospitals in a short period of time. Uh, I really believe uh, he wants to get that done and he wants to get it done fast. Yes, I think he's doing it very professionally. So that clip did not age well, obviously. But that's not the only example of misinformation that Donald Trump and his cohorts were spreading. For example, he was continually trying to downgrade the threat that COVID was. Here's an example of him talking about the infection rate going down, when in fact, now in retrospect, we know that it was going up big time. And again, when you have 15 people and the 15 within a couple of days is going to be down to close to zero. So again, another example of something that Donald Trump that has not aged well. So if we're looking for exoneration on this issue, we certainly aren't finding it here. And then, of course, who can forget this clip? So supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light. And I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. We'll the right, folks who could. right. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it there's a tremendous number of the lungs, so it'd be interesting to check that. So that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds, it sounds interesting to me. Now, Donald Trump later claims that that clip was him just being sarcastic. He couldn't defend what he actually said, so he claimed, oh, I was just joking. Well, I don't know about you, but having watched that video, it certainly doesn't look like he was joking there. So you can make your own judgment from that. So the point being, just like that stopped watch being right twice a day, Donald Trump having said so many different things on both sides of every issue means that at some point he's going to be right about something. Now, let me emphasize that there is still a knot of evidence to support the theory that the source of COVID was a lab leak in Wuhan. Now, one thing to point out about the Biden administration, and this is really a big difference between them and the Trump administration, is they didn't need to announce that they were reopening the investigation into the source of this virus. They knew, obviously, that this would be something that Donald Trump and his allies would crow about and somehow claim that they've been exonerated by this being looked at. But the difference is that the Biden administration is oh my gosh, honest, that they actually report on what they're doing and tell the American people honestly what their goals are. It would have been so easy for the Biden administration simply to cover this over and make sure that nobody saw about it or maybe just not even investigate it. Claim, oh, it's water under the bridge. It doesn't matter now. But instead, they realize this is too important. A, we need to investigate it. B, we need to announce it. This shows the difference between a transparent administration that's doing its job and cares about reporting the information that's the truth to the American public versus the Trump administration. But even if it does turn out that this lab leak theory is valid, it doesn't matter because once the virus started, the virus started. We know it started in China. Eventually, it came over here. There were concerns that a pandemic would start going way 
back. And in fact, during the Obama administration, there was an office set up in the White House to deal with the potential of pandemics. Guess what happened in 2018? Well, the Trump administration disbanded that office. And by the way, if you're questioning anything I'm saying, I'm going to include links to all the articles and all the videos down below. So the point is that once we did have this pandemic to deal with, the Trump administration basically gotten rid of the office that would have dealt with it. So as a result, we were caught flat footed and unprepared. There are other ways, though, in which the Trump administration failed us. The amount of misinformation that was spread by the Trump administration, arguing issues on both sides and really trying to cover over their own incompetence, meant that nobody knew exactly what was going on. Nobody had good information. And politicizing the wearing of masks and taking other steps to protect yourselves from the virus really is something that made us in America particularly vulnerable. People in other countries couldn't believe it when they looked at us and found that things like wearing masks was some sign as to where you stood politically. Everybody should have been wearing a mask because it was stopping the virus from spreading. How is that political? Well, Trump made it political, and that's one of his failings as well. But the failings of his administration and its incompetence go beyond that. The administration undermined the efforts of states to control the virus spread. I mean, who can forget him tweeting that Michigan needed to be liberated? This is my home state, obviously, because at the time that we were dealing with one of the worst virus outbreaks in the country, because, of course, we have a lot of communication with China here in Michigan. As a result of that, Trump tweeted out that they should liberate Michigan and made it difficult for our governor here to try to stop the virus from becoming something that was worse than it should have been in Michigan. And in fact, ultimately, the efforts of Governor Whitmer here in Michigan made Michigan a case study of getting the virus under control. No thanks to Donald Trump on that point, by the way. But it got worse. There was not only no national coordination of vaccine distribution or the distribution of equipment that was needed to treat people, things like ventilators, but actually the Trump administration set it up so that the states were competing against each other for this equipment and the federal government sometimes even stepped in and competed with them, driving up the costs for the states. And the federal government has certain tools at its disposal that it could have used as part of a national security agenda to kind of step in and create a national effort of production to create things like more ventilators that were needed. That would have saved lives, frankly. But to make matters even worse then, the administration not only being incompetent, but being corrupt then, abused the programs that were set in place to deal with this by offering no bid contracts to contractors who really didn't have any expertise in dealing with the development of masks, ventilators, vaccines, anything like that. And also the programs that were set up to help the economy, like the Paycheck Protection Program, were distributed to cronies of the president, to large businesses and others who didn't deserve it. Had it not been for the prompt efforts of certain investigative reporters, we never would have known about this. Some of the, those companies ended up returning the money that they got because they really didn't deserve it. But others of the companies kept it. And what's more is that that got in the way then of small businesses who really needed this money actually getting access to the funds. So at every step of the way, the Trump administration not only didn't help make things better, they actually made things worse. Now, if you don't believe that, just look around. Compare how things have gone under the Biden administration, which just announced that it has distributed 300 million vaccinations with the chaos and uncertainty of the Trump administration, where literally every state was doing something different. When I went to get my COVID vaccines here in Michigan, I went down to Ford Field, and I was so impressed to see the organization that was present in this uh, vaccination location. The military was there. Everything was computerized. I was in and out in a matter of 10 minutes. It was really impressive. That's an example of what the federal government can do when it has competent, engaged leadership. And that's what was missing during the Trump administration. Well, if you agree with me or disagree with me, I'd love to hear your comments down below. And in the meantime, if you could like this video, maybe subscribe to the channel and click that little bell that will notify you when I post new videos, that would be great. And I will see you in the next video. And until then, thank you.